Okay, now they can hear me. What's up, everybody? How's our audio? Jay, you got audio? I've got audio in Kazamine. Jay, Jay just went limp while watching that. Kazamine, <laughs> I went limp on me catch. See, Jay Dyer knows exactly what to do when you're in a vegan protest. What you want to do is let your body go limp. Like a limp he goes mushroom. Limp. <laughs> He's good at going limp. He does it if he's not in me bed. <laughs> Cares a mean. Cares a mean too. Man, that was 15 minutes of... All right, so <laughs> I know how hard it is to watch some of these people, so I try to make it funny, right? These clips are so hard to ingest, especially if you have to watch the whole video of, like, David They're Attenborough. Cringe, They're hardcore cringe, but you did it. You did well. Dude, Attenborough, that guy, <laughs> he just goes, waxes poetic about how we need to kill everybody in every single one of his speeches. And these boomers eat it the up. Boomers are, the boomers <laughs> love him. But David Attenborough even agrees no, that the climate crisis, the climate crisis is an existential He's crisis. He's so eloquent. He's so <laughs> eloquent. <laughs> and they're going to kill us all. <laughs> all right. What's up, chat? What's going on? Thanks to, um, we had a super chat there. Where was it? Cowitarian? Was that who it was? Thank you for the super chat. Must, much appreciated. Uh, got Jay Dyer. We're going to talk all about Osho cult today. That video started off with Osho. You might have forgotten because of all the other degenerates that were in between Osho and Jay and I. Um, but we got we got a nice little talk today. What are we going to talk about, Jay? We're going to talk about Osho cults. We're going to talk about Osho. Osho. Uh, we're going to talk about the mind control cults behind all that stuff. I got a lot of notes. I watched all the stuff you sent. And uh, nice. yeah, thanks for having me back, dude. I'm just kind of chilled on the couch, laid out, sexy style, ready Chilling to, up. Ready to harass these uh, vegans. There you go. And their stupid cults. By the way, I didn't realize that Osho's cult, uh, it, I think it was at least, it was vegetarian, right? Vegetarian, and but Osho himself. Now, veganism wasn't really much of a word back in the 80s. That right? wasn't, but, it, but vegetarianism was prepping for it. Vegetarianism was it, but they were hardcore ethical vegetarians. And Osho even said, milk is not yours. Milk is not for you. The cow's milk is not yours. <laughs> cow's milk is that. not yours. He said, Osho said that. Check, you have to check do the slow, he has a, a whistle. He, he's got a booger whistle on every one of his words with an S. If, Jesus when the serpent in the garden told them to eat of the fruit, the fruit was really a peepee. <laughs> when you pray to any god, you pray to Osho right now. Osho <laughs> is all of everything. We are all one, but Osho is more one than you. So Osho have 90 Rolls Royce. <laughs> and uh, and will be 27 by end of Tuesday. <laughs> Remember when she, that was a great line that Sheila had when she was on Donahue or whatever, and the one was like, "He's a cult leader. He's got 19 Rolls Royces," and she was like, "And he will have 27 by Tuesday." <laughs> <laughs> Sheila. So so if you guys haven't seen what is the uh, Wild Wild Country is the name of the Netflix documentary. With the Osho cult, the Rajnishis, or the Sannyasins, as some of them were called. But this was a really fascinating little piece of like 20th century history. And uh, this is a really important um, illustrator of the methods of cult control and kind of the 20th century cult creation that we see. Uh, you know, this whole almost MK Ultra institutionalized cultural zeitgeist that we see now of just cult leaders and now the internet man i mean 10 years from now what it's gonna get crazy we got the internet now the ultimate recruiting tool for cults yeah i you know i was kind of blown away at stuff you've shown me over the last year the the stuff that related to like nature boy i mean i don't know if he's directed by some central intelligence agency but he is basically a version of this kind of a thing where people are coaxed into going to some community videos we've watched about be giant vegan festivals yep all very cultic you know when we think about burning man these are all preparatory things to reintroduce us into the new society that they want to bring in and you've been covering that really well 
lately. I got a bunch of notes on the Osho. And this was crazy. I didn't realize. I thought, oh, somebody said, have you watched the Osho documentary? You mentioned it. Some other people. I thought it was like, a, you know, an hour and a half documentary. This is a damn six part. <laughs> like, this is a commitment, dude. I yeah. mean, it, it was worth it. Uh, I think they should have squeezed it into maybe, you know, three hours, maybe. But I, I, I did the whole it's thing. It's a big a story. A it's a big story. Yeah, I think I think uh, some of the personal some of the personal stuff with some of these guys. Yeah, like I I wasn't so interested in some of the personal stories. Like that really. It's kind of this archetypal the boomer thing. lawyer who's all choked up and still appreciates and loves Osho. Dude, that's how when you meet these people, these Oshoites, these former Oshoites, they're still like that. I've met a few of these people. You know, he was a great man. You know, I mean, you know, I was just tired of the nine to five and uh, the, 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 the the crazy work hours and what the hell am I doing? And I thought, hey, why not just bang my friends? Right? <laughs> just so bang I'm everyone. I'm like, wow, I didn't realize this was that crazy. And then uh, there's this one part uh. where it's like. Uh, you know, Osho had this great. He starts getting choked up. And that, maybe it wasn't him. It was one of the. They were like, you know, Osho had this thing. You know, if you have an enemy, you need to sleep with him. <laughs> <laughs> like Osho, Osho said, sleep with your enemies. It was. was it like, got what? so weird. Well, the way that they use sex, I guess. I mean, that's a good thing to uh, to to talk about. The way that they use sex as a control mechanism. This is something that's been institutionalized for a long time, but it's it's such a science in these cults. You know, they, uh, yeah, exactly. like they, they had polyamory, they had, um, you know, crazy orgies, really right. intense, intentionally, intensely charged emotional states that they were constantly harvesting or, uh, uh, ritualistically manifesting in certain ways. Right. And these kind of like Crowley rituals, I mean, it's very Crowley. Exactly. It was very Crowley. And that surprised me. Um, let's see. First note I took was the plan community aspect. That's the first mm -hmm. thing that stuck out was that. So they got this Wall Street lawyer guy on. He seems like he's probably like the CIA, at least one of the CIA connects, and probably Sheila, Sheila too. She's probably uh, protected by somebody. And they're talking about, oh, let's have a, a new way to organize society. This is an experimental community. And all these cults in this time period, they're all experimental communities. They're all coming out at this time to, to test and to see what people will accept, uh, what things people can do how can they how much can they tolerate uh how can we manipulate all these things i think it's a giant experiment it's a giant test tube so that's the first thing that stood out to me that this was a planned community and guess what the world that we're going into that you cover in so many of your videos that i talk about so many times in the globalism books talks mm. uh, is the planned smart city which will have this kind of an atmosphere you think yeah. i'm joking i'm not joking yeah, it's what do you think Tinder is? Like what do you think? Why do you think Tinder and Grinder are out there? You know, they they want this carnival of sexuality, right? Like this this carnival of weird, um, ritualistic. Imagine, uh, yeah, a smart city, Osho, an Osho smart city, with like AI Tinder Grinder implemented into everybody's apartment. So you just like, <laughs> you just like speak to the like maybe Osho's voice will be the voice of the AI. You'll be like. He'd be like, uh, AI God, and he'll go, yes, what can I do for you, my child? And you'll say, I am in the mood to bang my enemies. Uh, my enemy in eighth grade was, uh, you know, the, the, the bully on the football team. Uh, bring him in. I want to pee-pee poo-poo him. Yes, my child, that is a good move for you. I will summon him from the... Uh, sector Z of the smart city, and then he'll come in, and 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 that I means just kind of blew me away. Like, this is this is what they want. They want these cults are the studied research, the the R and D for yeah. the planned community of the future. Yeah, right. Well, it's 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 so crazy to see how. <clears throat> How many of these people got so deeply caught up in this too, and how you know the Western, the way that society is. The word society is so funny. Society, man, it's just society, yeah. dude. You know, like society, like it's all, it's all society or whatever, man. It sucks so much, dude. Uh, no, but the way the way that culture is, people are so ready for something like this. It's such an empty, hollow, materialistic culture, and that exactly. primes That's you. That's what the boomer dudes in the video say. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're like. 
you know, I was working like 50 hours a week, man. I made all this money and it was like, man, what the fuck am I doing, man? I might as well just study on Roche. And all he's there to do is to tell you a bunch of bullshit that you, that you want to hear. And it's all like a bunch of half of truths. It's all like, he'll say stuff like, Christianity, religion is corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I follow Jesus, not Christianity. But oh, in yeah, his version, well, it's so deep. Like the institutional religion is so corrupt. But let's just follow Jesus, man. You know, Jesus was like a, a tenor, a hippie preacher, man. Yeah. And it, it, it dupes so many people. It's crazy how many people this stuff dupes. Yeah. Check him out. Here's, here's our show right here. There we go. And made gods who have preceded him. Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh has a highly pragmatic philosophy about money. Money is power. <laughs> and power can purchase anything. Booger whistle. Adore. <laughs> That's booger sugar whistle. Oh, man. I'm trying it. There's this clip of him. Like all the. There you go. There's uh, Darshan's. They do and these. Power can purchase anything. Adoring. Oh, it wasn't video. They, there was parts of it that have. They've got some video clips of them doing their little, uh, their darshan experiences, and he's like rubbing their head. He's rubbing their third eye, and everybody's yeah. just like ah, ah, and and they were drugging them. See, this is one thing that actually came up in. Yes. It comes up in a lot of these documentaries. They were given drugs at certain points. Um, they were putting Haldol in the water when they had a bunch of homeless people that they had brought in in order to politically manipulate the town that right. they live in and politically take over the town. So, I mean, you've got the sex cult aspect, the drugs, the, uh, you know, the, the escapism. And then they, these people got full on weaponized against the town around them. Like they, they, they brought it to the point where these people were ready to kill. They're ready to kill these people in this town. Yeah. So I was going to get to that. So let's see. My next note I had was, that um remember india is a colony of was a colony of england yeah. and one one thing i noticed is that i think there's a connection between ancient hindu philosophy the caste system and the british darwinian social darwinism system i think they adopted it very well and it makes sense because out of hinduism comes all this veganism this vegetarianism this this idolatrous stupid brahmanic cult and that's what he represents. I wouldn't be surprised if this wasn't probably some kind of British, joint British US intelligence study. Yeah. Maybe that's why this stuff was uh, protected. And, it, and if again, you remember, yeah, they started off in India. So the, right. the actual cult started in India. They had legal troubles in India. They had tr trouble manipulating the situation there. And then they transferred everybody and flew to the US and bought land in exactly. Oregon. Exactly. Giant transfer. And it's never made clear where all this money comes from. They, a lot they, of it was I, drugs. Told, a lot of it was drugs. Huh? Oh, do you know a lot? A lot of it was drug running, right? Like uh, I don't know if I they talk assume. about it. Yeah. But did they did they mention that in the Netflix one? I, I didn't. I mean, I might have missed it if they did. I don't um, think so. I don't think they talked about that part in the Netflix one. But if you watch, there's one called uh, "Fear Is the Master," and it's from 1983. And there's clips of it. We can watch some clips of it. Like this is this is from that film. They talk about how when they ran out of money. They had no money, money left to give when they hadn't given any more money. And he had, you know, trust fund kids giving their trust. He had uh, Malibu wow. people giving their homes to him. He had people giving up their whole lives to him. And when they had no more money to give, they would travel. They would fly around with bags full of hash and uh, hallucinogens and whatever else. They also uh, had a lot of illegal guns. They had illegal guns at the ranch, too. So they were involved in all sorts of organized crime, which is kind of brushed under the rug in the documentary. Exactly. I mean, they were totaling up the, the wealth at one point and maybe about halfway through the, the series. And it was like, oh, totals of like $90 million. I'm like, $90 yeah. million? That's got to be weapons and drugs. I mean, nothing else makes that much that, that easily. And uh, so let's see. The first thing I noted was they eventually got raided by the FBI and they noticed they had a lab. This is going to tie into what you're talking about because – they had they had a lab where they were culturing E. coli or not E. coli. What was it? Salmonella. And they were poisoning the salad bars in this town. <laughs> the boomers. 
I mean, I'm not laughing because the boomer's getting poisoned. I'm just saying, like, this is obviously more than just, you know. Uh, Come on, Jay. We know we know that's what you're laughing at. You don't like boomers. No. <laughs> Dude, yeah, that was crazy, right? They, they were, they, how did they get salmonella? How the hell did they get that stuff? They had a lab. That's what was the crazy part. That's when I heard that was a lab. <laughs> they had a lab. So the, I wonder what kind of drugs they were making because they exactly. were giving they were giving the Haldol to or I said they were giving Haldol to the homeless people who were coming in. Um, and when they were doing these rituals, like it, when you watch the videos of these people, it seems like everyone's on acid, right? They, I think that right. they were probably also OSHA there were said. Doses in their I think they were dosing everybody with low doses of stuff and experimenting all kinds with a lot of different stuff there. That's why the people were so in love with Osho is that they're dosed up and he's up there talking very slowly, very slowly. And you're like, whoa. All right. And everybody projects, they all project their spiritual aspirations onto him. Um, it's, it's really crazy how it's, it's very demonic, like the way that these cult leaders, they tap into this. They realize what they can do. They realize kind of the magnetic power they have over people and they just take it to these crazy extremes where like they're having using people... drugs and sex using the basis desires uh yeah. and then controlling people not just with that let's see what else the next part was the um there you go. i can't read my notes space oh he has a space recliner <laughs> He has, space a, <laughs> he has a recliner that's a uh, space and he looks like a cross between star trek and santa claus like if santa came from space yeah. i'm from the santa planet um they go to hollywood okay that was another interesting part too so they go to hollywood just like other cults have done they recruit some famous people uh hasia who was didn't they say she was the wife of the producer of godfather that was yes. pretty crazy Yes, there were also, so, but there were some like State Department type people too, like an ambassador to uh, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. The daughter of the U.S. Mm -hmm, ambassador to the mm -hmm, U.N. was there, yeah. and this woman yeah, who survived, a woman who survived, a woman who survived Jonestown was also there. <clears throat> wow. Who who was also kind of connected? This that that's in the uh, Rajneesh cult exposed videos that we got clips pulled uh, up here. Okay. Yeah, and that suggests yeah. So Hollywood, CIA, Intel black market mafia uh and then they so they have a bit of a falling out with his right hand woman sheila sheila is a character isn't she um and so yeah. when they have their following out he's bhagwan says that it's the end times and this was about the time where they start training well right before sheila leaves they start training they start the all of a sudden they've got all these guns, a giant cache of guns, and they're teaching all these idiots out there. <laughs> yeah. Where do they get all the guns? Yeah. Where are they getting all the, the guns? Training <laughs> with all these guys out there training, doing shooting. And um, these were unregistered guns too. These weren't like, you know, yeah. these were arms trafficking guns. These aren't guns that they were, you know, just buying legally a lot of them. They had full on. One of my uh, favorite scenes is, yeah. So they're asking Sheila on national TV. It's starting to get national TV coverage in the early eighties. And they're like, why are you training people with guns and what and and we what if we what do you say to people who say that you need to be arrested and your cult needs to be shut down she goes tough titties <laughs> tough titties i say tough titties i say that was tough the best titties. line <laughs> tough titties she's great and sheila's sheila's really uh entertaining woman right like she's very she's um she's definitely a psychopath uh, she's like a charlie so manson type She's guilty of like all these heinous crimes, and they ask her, "Do you feel any remorse?" Why should I feel remorse? What have I done? All I have done is what anyone would do in my situation. It is all. It is all natural. Right. So yes, never done anything wrong. Uh, I like how she. Um, she also, she had all these murder attempts against all these people and all these yeah. really crazy crimes. Biological what have warfare. I done? Anyone would have done this in my situation. <laughs> But she just gets by unscathed. Like she never gets charged with anything. Oh There's yeah, no, she's never in trouble. Exactly. No legal, no legal repercussions for this woman at all. She was fully protected. Yes, and then uh, at some point it appears if we're, if we're to believe what <clears throat> what they were saying, they wanted to get rid of Bogwan. Right, they're gonna. And he was getting in the way. Kill, huh? Yeah, he was getting, getting in the way. way. <laughs> they were going to kill Osho. Uh, it ends up not working. Because he is doped up all the his dope all the time, and so he's like, there's videos like he's over, he's like 
toppling over. He's so he's so up. messed up. Yeah, he, he, there's videos um, of him that weren't in the series where he's talking about drugs. He's like, I think the government should manufacture more powerful drugs that will make us more happy, and bring us more joy. Like talk, and then he says the, the government should make LSD. He says LSD should be made more abundant and it should be available everywhere, readily available everywhere, <laughs> specifically LSD. Santa space, Santa <laughs> space calls. Um, let's see, what's my next? Oh, and then it becomes an end times cult. So he throws in the new element. All the cults got to have the end times stuff. Um, and they start training. They start have they have bunkers. They're going to prepare for the end of the world. They won their initial court case. That was pretty crazy. I didn't yeah. think they would, but they won the initial court case. But the government's keeps coming after him supposedly or at least the fbi might have been a cia cult and then you know on the down low but the fbi thinks they're going to bust you know this crazy cult they don't realize that it's a higher level entity that's running this thing probably is my guess um like you said it becomes uh the largest immigration fraud case because they were running some scam where they were having people get married in other states and come back with their spouses so that it it was some kind of big immigration fraud. Then, as you pointed out, they ship in all these homeless people. So the cult takes over this whole tiny little Oregon boomer run town. And all the boomers are like, well, we thought that it was a little strange. And then they start doing weapons and doing hanky panky out in the <laughs> middle of the street. And I just didn't know what to think of it. It's just really weird. And it gets weirder and weirder and weirder. And, cra- and, the, and the naive, I just, those poor naive townspeople, they just, Dude, there was no like clue. 50 people in that whole town before these, before 2,000 or 3,000 of these people moved in. Imagine if that's your town. You move there because you want a place where there's nobody, where you know the sheriff, where everything's cool. You do what you want. Everybody protects each other's, you know, shit. All the neighbors are, uh, are your buddies. And then 2,000 drugged up, doped out, orgy having crazy hippies with wild, psychotic eyes. Uh, move into your town and start, you know, opening up their little vegetarian restaurants and selling drugs in the streets and uh, having orgies everywhere. And it's just, um, yeah, they they took it over like a gang. It was an invasion. Exactly. Yeah, it was like a giant army gang of lunatics. And then, so after the immigration fraud, they get busted in, in some trouble. Uh, they're doping up all the street people, like you said. And then they send poisoned chocolates. That was crazy to the lawyers and people coming after them, supposedly. Uh, yeah. the, the the people that were prosecuting them ended up with poison chocolates that they ate and got sick. Yeah. Um, they targeted the journalists that were writing about them, supposedly. They targeted like po- politicians locally, people who were running yeah, against right. them in different ways. Then it turns out, as you said, it was a gigantic wiretapping and that they recorded all the orgies and all the sex. So they were trying to have yeah. a giant sort of Epstein blackmail operation going too. But it was also, there were a lot of, if you look at who was there, there were a lot of psychologists, psychiatrists, sociologists, and scientists who were there, you know, on their own accord joining the cult, but also people that were probably there studying it, you know, from the intellectual class in India, a lot of the people that oh, went right. over to the U.S., they were sociologists, social, psychi- uh, social psychologists, psychologists, and psychiatrists. These are the type of people who were into this. So I, I think we might be looking, who knows where all the tapes are and where all the data is. But it seems like, it, like you said earlier, this is like a huge experiment. Um, I want to yeah. find that. I'm trying to find that clip where they talk about all the, the psychologists and stuff that were there. But there's, yeah. this is an interesting clip because it, it talks a little bit about the working conditions, I think, if I'm, if I'm right. But let's, let's see. If you, can you hear this, Jay? The people that are in the lower class, which most of yeah. the people on the ranch are in that category, if they want to leave, they couldn't leave because they don't have enough money to go home on. So they gave all their money uh, to him like a and slave. then had no money to leave They've with. They've been extricated right. from any ties with friends. I like when they interview the, the homeless people. So they interview that one black dude who's obviously hooked on something. He's like, hey, man, I ain't leaving here, man. This is the best place I've ever been, man. They've been giving me everything I need. I ain't leaving here until, it's, until the police come force me out of here, dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, they're putting Cause him because he's getting all the. <laughs> they're dopamine. feeding him antipsychotics. They were giving them like full on zombie medicines. <laughs> Yo, no, this is the best place I've ever been. <laughs> it's dope, dude. I love the green also, beer. Also, my boy, beer. man, he got the all right. He all right. <laughs> yeah, I drink that beer every day, dog. I drink two cups and I'm tipsy. It's very terrifying to them to have to leave there because economically and emotionally they what is are footage of these people without Rajneeshpuram. If you were in the hierarchy on the ranch, you got this the part, dress, yeah. brand new clothes, uh, you you got the best of everything. There's this Hindu if caste you were too. A labor, in my opinion, you got treated like a dog. It was my first experience of being like in a communist state look at this. she's got like sandals on trying to dig with the arduous hours from 12 to 18 hours a day this is no communist state <laughs> with very crowded the working conditions and living bhagwan having no 16 19 20 policy. rolls royces most of the people yeah. on the ranch the working class were forever breaking down they were just they were mentally fatigued they just couldn't keep up with the constant pressure. And they're all vegetarian you know, too, so they're the they're malnourished at the same time, right? Exactly. They're feeding these they're, people. And they're 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 like uh, street people and boomers who left their nine to five, and now they're in this just shithole. Sheila has <laughs> yeah. a different picture of life and work at the ranch. That is Sheila. The has been made into worship. Here at the ranch, we work sometimes twenty hours a day, and still, at the end of the day, we are laughing and having good time. If the worshipful Sanyasin is not having a good time, he had but. better keep it to himself. <laughs> <laughs> they had uh, very intricate spots. Yeah, this is the documentary I saw a long time ago. Ranch. This is it. We referred to them as snitches. They'd relate back to Sheila if you said any little thing wrong because they didn't like negativity getting started. They didn't like rumors. Therefore, the more you told on people, it seemed like the higher up on the scale you went. This, right? This is just like the Stanford in prison experiment in certain ways. Look at yeah. these. Check these chicks out. Those are some. Let's see. I like those sideburns. Oh, these got some badass sideburns. That chick looks like Andre the Giant's midget sister. <laughs> on the left. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, in the middle, that's that's actually Jimmy Savile's twin sister in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like him by the way uh remember that it was the largest immigration fraud case and the largest wiretapping in in u.s history that was crazy the massive immigration fraud right that was pretty important they they did these marriage sham marriages to get people yeah weird, they were sending people into other right states to get married and then come back and then let's see what else oh the craziest part this was the craziest part of all of it crazier than the orgies crazier than the mind control do you remember the beavers part? They killed all the beavers that poisoned them for some reason. So uh, they claimed the that beavers, for some reason, are the easiest. Like when beavers are decomposing, that certain bacteria grow easier in ground up beavers. And oh, Osho yes. Colt was grinding up beavers and dumping the ground up beavers into the city's water supply to poison everything. That's right. That was the craziest this, part to me. But and, but you see, the, and it only took them a few months with some of these people to get them to, to that point, right? Of just ritualistic exhaustion. Like they bring them into these big groups, and everybody would jump up and down and hyperventilate and do these crazy, like high intensity exercises and scream at each other and yell at each other and pound the ground and punch the ground, and then they go dead silent. That's the Osho ritual. Yeah. Full ecstasis. That's the sadistic yeah like mind control that he would do on the members of the cult yeah. but the the townspeople that opposed him that's who they were poisoning their old yeah. senior citizen salad salad bar and the water supply right but to get them to that point that was a, that was a crucial thing right the breakdown of their psyche the sex orgies yes. all these things to just destroy them turn their mind to mush and then so they, they would weaponized just obey them. Like, like, yeah, like total. Mindless they would genocide race. people. They would literally, like, they they right. had justified a genocide. They would have killed this entire town uh, if and they. This is the kind of cult that they're trying to turn the normies in our day into, so that they will become like these extinction rebellion people out exactly. there, laying around like morons, going limp like that dude in the video at the beginning. Yeah. That's these are the people that are those people. It's the same stuff. 
that's what it is. Yeah, thank you for uh, that. Sometimes I forget to bring it back, and that that's why I did that video in the beginning to keep myself on track too. Because you know we've got the this whole extinction rebellion, climate action, the way that the youth are being weaponized now. This is what they're doing. So it's, they don't even have to go as far. People are so much more broken down and malleable already just from the trauma from yep. television, right? From the constant gaslighting you get on TV from, I mean, since, you know, 2001, what happened uh, in that one month in 2001 that you can't even talk about on the internet anymore. Uh, from what happened in, uh, you know, pe people in schools having to hide under their desk and doing, you know, shooter drills and stuff like that. All this ways, all these ways that they traumatize people and break them down and normalize and ritualize the violence, the sexuality and all this stuff. People are already so mushed up and, and ready to be radicalized, whereas back then in the 70s and 80s with Osho, it took some more work, right? Like some of these people had families they had to leave. But now it's like, I mean, the family's already been broken down and eroded to a certain extent, which Osho... There's clips of Osho, and in this documentary that we were just watching, there's one clip where he says, "You know, the, the family unit is it is terrible. It is a tool of op oppression and inequality." Yeah. And you know, the this is he has all the same ideas that these people in the, which Jay has done a really good job at documenting their worldview in his globalist book series. The things that Osho believes that he teaches that he implements are all right out of that, and they're all also right out of the Stanford Research Institute's. Um, Changing Images of Man document, which I've talked about a few times yeah, here. The more, I, about. the more I watch this, the more this seems like almost probably, I mean, I can't prove it, but it definitely has all the earmarks of something MK Ultra related. Yeah. Uh, we've definitely seen that come up in the past with other cults like Jim Jones. There's some uh, indications that it did have sort of CIA MK Ultra related connections. And I, I mean, this has all the earmarks. I would be really surprised if it wasn't. Um, yeah. It's a more advanced version of the Jim Jones cult, right? And Jim Jones, they brought him down to Guyana, whatever. Who knows what happened down there? No, we don't really know. It's speculation. Uh, we do know that people were gunned down. We do know that people, it wasn't just a big voluntary poisoning, that it was a little bit uh, more complicated than that. Uh, but it's like that was, that was one thing. They finished that, and then it seems like this is an experiment m very similar yeah. where they kept pushing them right up to the limit. You know, like, it, there were certain situations where, they, you know, they talked about getting a plane, loading it with explosives, and running it into a right. building in the town. This is, they were planning full-on terrorism, and, um, but they didn't, yeah. they didn't do a lot of the more crazy plots that they talked about. And then a lot of them, they almost did them, and then something went wrong, or, you know, there are a few of these murders that just barely didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, it definitely suggests some kind of connection, um... The mind control therapy, he, he did therapy techniques, which were basically sadism, where you have to get the, the crap beat out of you. That's your therapy. <laughs> yeah. And then you have sex uh, at the end. You you beat each other up and, and then you have sex. That's Yeah, the you can put the pee pee in the poo poo of your enemy. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Um, that's obviously a bunch of mind control nonsense. Cults. Uh, let's see. Oh, then they made a deal with the feds. That's also suspicious. Different Probably. different ones of them, Sheila yeah. maybe and Bhagwan. Eventually, he eventually turned over to the feds. Yeah, made deals. Um, oh, another interesting element too that they were connected to Gurdjieff, uh, not directly, but that they borrowed a bunch mm. of the mysticism of Gurdjieff, and Gurdjieff is connected to mind control and all this because he's yep. at the beginning of the ecumenist movement. Yeah. So you want to see the end result of ecumenism. Look at the Osho cult, which borrowed its modeled its teachings on Gurdjieff. Do you know about Gurdjieff? Yeah, G.I. Gurdjieff. I, I read yeah. his books like in college, you know, and I was looking at all the all the occult stuff. And yeah, Gurdjieff was one of the ones I read. His, he traveled around Russia and talked to a lot of these old like Eastern mystic people and traveled around exactly. the Orient. And he was into drugs and opium, and uh, but also ecstatic ritual and dance and ecstatic yes. dance. Exactly. And Osho implements ecstatic dance. And if you look at a lot of the cults today, um, you, you have a lot of mini cults. Like you have, you know, all throughout LA and all these yuppie areas, you have these same practices that are just corporate. They're implemented in a corporate way rather than a full-on cult, right? So instead of, you know, having, you know, ecstatic 
um, Osho orgies, you can go to like an ecstatic dance class if you live in San Francisco. You can go mm. to yoga and then go to ecstatic dance class and then go, you know, to whatever, like a, 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 a strip club or something. You, know, you have a lot of these elements are kind of normalized in society now, but what you had at, in, in these cults was like this breeding ground and experimentation with so many thousands, tens of thousands of people. In these if calls. you need to release your sexual tension, I recommend two things. Grind the beaver in the bedroom and grind the beaver in the water supplies. <laughs> <laughs> Shh. Two senses, the mystical and the literal senses of grinding beavers. <laughs> grind beavers <laughs> beaver grinding with boomers when the boomers grind the beavers <laughs> it makes so much friction it smell <laughs> it make a certain smell that is unmistakable <laughs> then put in water supplies <laughs> then booga whistles <laughs> Oh man. So yeah, I vote uh ninety five percent chance CIA connected mind control experiment cult. Um another point too, do you ever have you ever noticed that none of the cults I think Jamie and I mentioned this in our cult talk, and I mentioned it in one of my old cult videos. Have you ever noticed no cult, maybe one in ancient history, but no modern cult at all promotes and teaches you logic and recognizing basic fallacies. Isn't that interesting? No, no not even, not even, uh, you the, have basic reasoning skills. <laughs> yeah. Not even the, the cult of the, the modern civic national cult in the U S like you don't learn this in uh good point. You don't even learn it in the schools. Check out here. Sure. You'll like this clip. I found this one clip I was looking for about how, they had no intention of actually producing food on their so-called farm, and they had no idea what they were doing. <laughs> Check this out. Really? On yeah. The ranch. When we received the permits to build them, it was a permit for one building, and instead we'd use the building for something else. The only building that we built was supposed to be a cafeteria, and it was actually used for a cafeteria. We never grew enough to feed the people down there. We planted the sunflower seeds just as more or less a joke to get the people to believe they were going to be farmers. I mean, I've seen them bail sheep grass and try to pass it off as hay. And, you uh, you can't feed the cattle. They, you know, they'll go out there and bail it up. Puts on a good show. And it looks good from an airplane. So it's just front. <laughs> and it's just a front operation for all the crazy shit going on. They're just out there bailing hay, but those animals ain't going to eat it. But, hey, it looks good just from an like airplane. Putting piles of grass into other piles, and they're, like, harvesting <laughs> weeds, basically. <laughs> planting sunflowers. That's what I think is so funny. They're planting sunflowers everywhere. <laughs> Man, we're going to, like, live on sunflower seeds, <laughs> That's what these vegans think, though, dude. These, you know what's crazy? <laughs> in, it, in, like, South America, there's all... It, you could... Like, hey, man, if you maybe we should do that. Maybe next year we'll just we'll start a fruitarian cult. You know, I mean, that seems like the one of the one of the safer routes uh, economically now is starting your own cult. But these people they come down to South America and they try to they're gonna make like a fruit farm and they think they're all gonna live off of their own land and be you know it's totally self sustained vegans on their fruit farms. And you'll see these people like come to town or go through a market or like travel through town. You spot them from a mile away. They always wear the same pants that like they buy in the stores around. And they always, they have the same dirty, grubby look and lost, like glossed over look in their eyes. And they got like really, they get real pale and their skin gets just, it, there's a specific look. You could spot them a mile away. I almost want to walk out to some of them and say, hey, how long you been vegan? You know, and, uh, and <laughs> but, uh, maybe, maybe I'll do that with a camera one day. I'll carry on a camera. I'll start, I'll, I'll street spot interview people and ask how long they've been vegan. And I'll see how many people I actually can, can guess vegan beforehand but anyways well, you these people create these fruit cults and they and they come down and they think they're going right. to be farmers and shit and they just end up laying around wasting away and by the end of it they all have like stds <laughs> and, you know it's like uh nature boy was the that model basically yeah and uh 
this this has a lot of the same models of the source family cult remember when we did the boiler you made i can't remember if you're on that boiler room but we we talked about the documentary on the source family cult very mm. very similar to this setup where um father yod uh gathered a bunch of dumb hippies around him and they set up the first strict vegetarian restaurant on the hollywood strip and they had all the famous hollywood elites woody allen and steve mcqueen hanging out at their vegetarian restaurant which come on give me a break that was drugs had nothing to do with some stupid ass food it was they were selling drugs or something at that place then his cult morphed from this like hippie thing into ritual magic and they started implementing rituals from crowley and the hermetic order of golden dawn and then it turns in and and the and they started a psychedelic band you can actually listen to father yod's psychedelic music with his band on youtube the clips are all up uh source family um they started a record label they moved into a estate out in the Hollywood Hills. Again, where is that? Where are these dumb cults get all this money? Well, it's because they're obviously selling drugs and shit, right? Yeah. Um, well, human I trafficking too, of course. You know, I mean, oh, a lot of right, this. right, right. And they're doing prostitution. They're like pro- pimping out all the yeah. the hoes in the cult. Manson yeah. model, same model with Manson. And then Father Yod, just like Bhagwan, gets in trouble and they realize that they're going to have to fly to somewhere. I think father Yod takes everybody to Hawaii, just like Bhagwan took everybody. I think to India, he didn't he have to go back to India or something. Yeah. He had legal troubles everywhere and he had, he had to leave or he just had to keep moving around and trying to get all his. He always knew beforehand that he needed to leave too. He would always get tipped off. Exactly. Good point. Yeah. Someone said we got a super chat here from Emil. Sends five bucks. Thanks a lot, Emil. Says, what about EDM festivals? Do they seem cultish to me. Drug use, mass fornication, erratic dancing, etc. People are obsessed with this. Yeah, actually, Jamie and I are going to do a stream on uh, the big dance festivals. Uh, the big dance, we, we, t- we used to cover this quite a bit back on the Hoaxbusters. We would talk about music festivals, how they're used for social engineering. And it's very similar to the model of Burning Man, except that now the big EDM festivals have really moved in the direction of like really hardcore globalism and really hardcore like almost demonism so Mm. a lot of the the festivals are openly totally about satanism and demonism which is very weird because sometimes there was in in the electric i'm a fan of uh electronica so i've liked you know electronic music for a long time back to the 90s and and every now and then there might be a electronic band that was or group or outfit that was kind of satanic like maybe apex twin or something like that but yeah. The weird part is that now the big festivals are, are more and more just openly demonic and satanic. Yeah. It's, it's pretty crazy how yeah, the iconography the is like like Mickey yeah. Mouse heads, like with an eye stamped out and stuff like that. Really demonic. Well, and it's getting like there's one festival. I forget which one it is, but it's totally, literally just demonic. Like it's yeah. it, you would if you didn't hear the music, you would think it was like a big, I don't know, death metal festival or something. But it's actually EDM. It's, it's crazy. But he's right that that uh, those are all totally connected to uh, to mind control. As much as I like electronic music, it, its origins are all straight out of uh, well, our best Tavistock, friend, Tavistock our friend stuff. Terrence McKenna, who also really liked to spend time at the Esalen Institute. He was a big proponent of the rave scene, and he would tell all the vulnerable children in the raves that they should also consume the mushroom in incredibly high doses when Terence McKenna himself was too afraid to take such doses of mushrooms anymore because he did not want to go into those demonic realms that had already (laughs) taken such strong control of him. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, um... I remember you, even back in the 90s, you would see the McKenna type stuff being promoted. There was uh, one of the techno outfits that was kind of well known, the Shaman. That was his name, the Shaman. Um, he was a big rave, popular in the rave scene. Uh, his music was. And by the way, a lot of that stuff, I mean, I know about Detroit and all that stuff that, with techno, but I, a lot of the electronica just comes straight out of England. So I would guess that it's straight from, uh, from Tavistock. Yeah. Now I wonder who I wonder who had access to all the tapes, all the recordings, and all this stuff at the Osho Cole. I wonder who did that. Joshua Baker sent uh, five bucks. Like where did all the recordings go? 
Yeah, yeah. I wonder who's got all that data. I mean, that's like for social psychologists and stuff, and these like you know crazy sociologists. They love that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, that's that's a lot of money that went into. You know, I'm sure that some of these government agencies have had access to it or Esalen. Exactly. Probably yeah, super the FBI yeah. probably confiscated all that, and then now yeah. the deep state has access to, to study all this in their their internal memos. Right, like Ghislaine Maxwell's sister, Christine Maxwell, who made that uh, software to share information between all the agencies. Like all all these type of people have access to it as well. Robert Maxwell's daughters, uh, Epstein. That's the type of information that these people are interested in, right? Epstein was talking about wanting a drug that would make somebody feel like they're always being watched. That was one of the things he you know is known to have sought out, and you know he he was interested in funding this type of research. Wow. We got a super chat from yeah, Josh. This, well, this Joshua. Would be, okay. This would be an Eps, pre Epstein style Epstein cult thing. Very totally. true. Yeah. Joshua Joshua Baker sent in a super chat. Thanks a lot, man. Sends five bucks. Says cults serve the purpose of filling the God shaped hole in people's hearts, but it's with a rotten nihilistic leader who preys on that vulnerability. Sad. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Psychopathic Thanks, narcissistic guys. Uh, are always the cult leader who might be charming and charismatic like Bhagwan, and then behind Bhagwan is the sociopathic Sheila. His well, if you seemingly you're, his yeah, well, I mean, it's it's like something. Imagine like you have you you realize you have that charm. You realize you have this ability to manipulate people. You realize people can be manipulated. You see. You, you see it, right? The door opens for you. Here's the keys, right? It's like this demonic key that gets given to certain people yeah. for whatever reason. Or sometimes they get it through drug use. Sometimes they get it through ritual initiation. Or they're just traumatized as a child and they've you know broken apart from yeah. their emotional um, connection to people and they're able to be full psychopaths. But like there's just it, – it's just this natural – it's this way it's like this demonic way of seeing everybody's weaknesses and being able to prey on them and take and harvest what you want from them and then just algorithmically mapping the world like that in the psychopathic way and the elite the establishment elite it's it's all about organizational um structures and uh you know higher or hierarchical structures to weed out people like that promote them and mm -hmm. get get you know crazy shit done using them exactly exactly uh yeah there's a there's a formula and a model and a technology to how these things are run and and you could say that these things are run like businesses and like intelligence operations they're mm -hmm. all kind of run in a very similar way um and they're kind of like limited hangouts in a way uh, that's another analogy you could make to when the cult is you know like being steered um not all cults are obviously, but but if they get big enough, they can easily be co-opted if they need to be. Well, you need is one person. So, all you got to do is have a lawyer uh, who can go in the at the end and get access to the tapes. All you need is one. All you need is one person to infiltrate an organization and get you what you want from them, and then you can let it be you know autonomous, decentralized. You know the, people, the intelligence agency work is decentralized in a lot of ways, right? It's not. It's not like it's all done by CIA. Um, you got these right. economic hitmen. They work for corporations. They work for banks. You have, um, yeah. So it's. Did you watch? You can, you can hire private intelligence people did to you, do stuff. You know? Yeah. Did you, this is a good segue? Did you watch the uh, documentary now episode with Owen Wilson? No, I didn't get to that one. Yet. Okay, that's really so. Season three of documentary now, which is like Fred Armisen and uh, some of these people that make this uh, these spoof mockumentary things, and. This one, it's Owen Wilson, and it's all done in the same style as Wild Wild Country, and Owen Wilson is the cult leader. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but it's like you, you will like yeah, it. No, I, was trying to, I was trying to find that stuff when, so my internet was going out for about two days, so I was having trouble. It was yeah. a local outage here, so I had a couple of days where I was having trouble with the internet, but uh, yeah, I do want to see that because um, it sounds very similar, be in the same vein. And by the way, have you seen the Source Family one? You should watch that one. I'll watch it. What's it called? Okay, I'm, I'm going to find that one for you, and I'll All send right. it to you. Yeah. I did watch Kumare. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the same, same type of stuff, yeah. Yeah, he was like, you know, he was just a normal guy who showed that anybody can go create their cult like this if they 
you know, grow their hair long and wear the right clothing. There's always the use outfit, the, right? Use the formula. Use the formula. There's a formula mm-hmm. to this. It's very easy. Don't overthink it. It's not a yeah. high IQ thing. It's just like a, the dumber it is, the better actually. So like he, I liked his staff, like he, even down to the details of that stupid staff with the Hindu symbol on it that yeah. he made. And uh, yeah, you got to have your magical the, staff. You got to have the magical robe. You got to have the long hair his robe. Yeah. Yeah. It helps to have, and, so and you he, seat he everybody below you. Bhagwan you, started with, which was a yoga center. Yes, where you sit in an elevated platform and everybody sits below right. you. You have silent time so everybody can go. Sit, be in a, you can be really silent. <laughs> and then you use some, you know, mystery men, sphinx type bullshit phrases. Yeah. Like right? that, like, it's like they sit and they go silent and they go into this voidy state where they can be manipulated because they feel insecure. They feel weird in this environment. It's a different, it's a curated environment. And then it's like he just starts slipping in. You slip in the twilight language about, oh, you are all a part of me, and I am a part of you, and yeah. we are all infinitely nothing, and nothing in an infinite sense is everything. And you just you say yeah, these yeah. like nonsense Terrence McKenna Bullshit. things. Yeah, just nonsense, right? And I saw the plan, the magnificent plan that the mushroom had of blending machine life with plant life and animal life. And it's like you know, all these cult leaders, they're all the same. They can wax poetic about this bullshit and just hypnotize you, basically. It is. That's a good way to put it. It's like a, it's like NPR voice, slow, hypnotic. And then the truth was revered. Yeah, <laughs> the truth was um, always inside of you. There's a I... charismatic woman that was popular. That stupid charismatic preacher's name. Uh, her name's Amy Simple McPherson. If you watch her lectures, her stupid preaching that she does, she was like this Benny Hinn type woman of her day. Yeah, she does the exact same thing. She does this really weird. Uh, cadence when she talks and she will talk yeah. about God and draw out these yeah. terms musical it's, it's very musical creepy, the way they do dude. it's real creepy when they have and they have the formula they just they like they know when to yes. hit these notes and those notes and they're they're playing an instrument basically and the it's instrument like a, is their audience NP, uh, uh, nlp type thing yeah 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 exactly that's exactly what it is in the nlp stuff that all came out of you know social sciences and these yes. um the same type of people who were at the Rajneesh cult, right? So NLP came from UC Santa Cruz, from these social scientist guys. And, you know, Huey Newton actually got an honor, not an honorary degree, he got a PhD from the University of California, Santa Cruz, after he was, he got out of prison. He studied under these NLP guys at UCSC. You talking about the socialist Huey Newton? Huey Newton, the Black Panther. Oh, oh, uh, okay. No, no, I get, I get mixed up. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh, it's an interesting little thing. A little weird connection there to all these cults. And so he went to prison, he came out, and things were a lot different with him when he got out of prison. And then he went, he got his PhD and started getting involved in a lot of these political, like kind of milk toast type organizations. And, you know, he was like de radicalized, but he, it was like he got kind of whitewashed in certain ways. It was weird. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He went to UCSC, studied NLP. Um, let's see. So, uh, couple more points i had on the the so all is one hinduistic type philosophies are great for cults because they tell you to turn off your reasoning uh, not that reasoning is the end all be all but you there's nothing wrong god gave us a reasoning faculty for a reason we don't right, but it's like they want you to turn off the reasoning god. so you could just be influenced by yes, the programming exactly. of their your emotional body or whatever they call it no, that you must open up your heart and your third eye and your intuition. Right. You want they want you to turn off your 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 thinking rational mind and tune into your intuition, which they're constantly seeding with ideas if, <laughs> with their exactly. Their yeah, did you see uh, Midsummer? No, but it looks horrible. <laughs> it looks really like, horrific. <laughs> it's pretty horrific, but uh, I'm not spoiling anything. But th- that's when she first gets there. The indigenous cult makes her take hallucinogens. Wow. Exactly. And then by the end, she does this whirling, spinning dervish that gets her totally, you know, like out of, like she doesn't even know what's going on. She starts speaking in tongues. Yeah. But it's like a, it's like a demonic version of tongues. And then she understands the language of the indigenous tribe there. 
Yeah. But uh, very similar to because Rajneesh had people doing this whirling dervish yeah. spin around until you don't know what the heck's going on. I got there's some shit. footage of that stuff. Let's see. Rajneesh. This is their meditation. Oh, it's not that one. Where is it? One of these videos has got. You must spin till you can't know your name. <laughs> In 1982, the Rajneeshis staged their first annual world celebration. With the crowds came the first signs of anxiety. Steve Sobel was hired to provide a security force of trained experts. Show of force so that anyone who had the Steve looks like a real hippie. Possibly a <laughs> yeah, some wow. paramilitary spec ops dudes in there running, <laughs> running security. <laughs> Fucking Phoenix program, Steve. Totally nothing shady about this at all. Just a normal hippie, Steve. Had trained bodyguards brought from India. Most from India. <laughs> samurais, and they've been trained in martial arts to kill people with their bare hands. <laughs> Look at that guy. What is this? The only thing He's like, yeah. <laughs> they definitely were very interested. When I, I have many guns and many and bitches, many western shooting. bitches, and all I your uh, neighbor belong to us. Send me your money and your guns and your western bitches. Send me pussies. <laughs> you send me them. We grind beavers all day. <laughs> I need more beavers to grind. <laughs> we got some super chats. We got Ben. Thanks a lot for the five bucks, man. Thanks you guys for the super chats. You guys, you know this very likely to get demonetized, like most of these videos. And you guys, super chats always keep these alive. You keep these flowing. Um, you guys keep throwing these super chats, and Jay will not leave. He says he'll stay as long as you're super chatting me. <laughs> Yo, Jay. How would you booger whistle the entire shows? You must do all show in all show voice, Jay. Jay Dyer, you, Jay, how would you respond to a college thought who say God is a woman? A college thought? A college says, thought that says God is a woman. I would laugh in her face. That's the appropriate response. Don't ever right. debate a thought. Why are you, yeah, exactly. Why are you wasting time talking to this person? <laughs> God is a woman. You know, God, face. God's a woman. Now, here's oh how you God. respond. The response is to <laughs> quote Bhagwan about beavers. You must understand that to truly free a woman, you must, you must kill. grind the beavers. You must give her abortion. Brenton Levi, 10 bucks, says, question for you both. If y'all were to imagine an ideal future, social, political, economic, spiritual for humanity in like 50 years, what would it look like? <laughs> I mean, dude, that's not up to me. A, a Rajneesh community, right? <laughs> yeah, it would look like a um, Rajneesh community. It's like like Burning Man mixed with uh, THX eleven thirty eight and uh, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, Did you like you, my idea of? Uh, you may not have heard me, but I was saying that um, in your coffin apartment, they could arrange it to where a cartoon anus comes down. And it drops yes. the kibble into your mouth for breakfast, and then that's what you—that's your breakfast. You get up, you go to the, yeah, the robot factory, and you push the buttons all day, and then you come home and you lay in your coffin apartment. I think you're onto something there. I think you're—I think you're really onto something. Here you go. Boomer power, boomer power. <laughs> Wait, was it, I hope there was no naked freeze. people. <laughs> I hope it is. So, I might get I might get this video taken down if there's naked people or something. I hope they don't. Emotionally wounded, be careful. Are becoming <laughs> victims of the gurus. Of the gurus. Rajneesh is one of India's most controversial gurus. There's something about the eyes too. Like they always have this same. They get this dead stare that they can do. Right, like they can just stare somebody down for a long time in this weird dominance, like animalistic moment. And it he's, looks to me like he wears mascara too. It he looks, looks like he's got mascara on. The, Osho uh, has been taking makeup advice from life coach Frank Tufano. <laughs> Richard Kerr sends uh, seven Australian dollars. See, they're not, look, Jay, they're not all degenerates in Australia. I got $14 left in the bank. After Aus conversion to USD, you'll get it all. Thanks for the laugh today. Well, Richard Kerr. Kazamine, too. Kazamine, Kazamine, too. 
Richard, if you cannot give more, you may not return to our cult. You must give super chat, big fat super chat, if you want to stay in our cult, or you must send Rolls Royces and bitches. <laughs> Rolls Royce need Bentley. Must have Bentley by weekend. Papa need a lot of Xanax. Give me many Zanny bars, and I also like to have very expensive champagne with my Xanax in Osho Colt. So, uh, pantheism, monism, Hinduism, shamanism, archaic revival, and primitivism. Those are CIA-funded things. Have you seen that clip where Tim Leary, I put it in that dumb video I made yesterday or two days ago, where Tim Leary says that the whole counterculture is the CIA. And all all the ideas, all my all my ideas that I had were ceded to me by the CIA, by yeah. the Central Intelligence Agency. <laughs> Timothy Leary, I gotta listen to his voice again. He's got a he's got a funny cadence to his talk. He's like he's he coked up cadence. all the time. He's always just in the But this he just manic... says it's all straight from the CIA. You can thank the CIA. Uh nice. the city state model of Disney and the planned community of Epcot. Imagine that combined with Rajneesh. And that's the future that they want. Well, I got another super chat from Corey. He says five bucks. He says university mass sporting events, rituals, constant rolling, degenerate rap, and propaganda commercial interlaced with hyped visuals of sport. Mm. Yes, and recruitment. Join the military. That's what I was gonna say. Like you get Beyonce dancing at the halftime show with you know a, a fake AR and a and a, uh, the military fatigues, telling and you join the and army. Katy Perry out there saying join the military. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess Beyonce is probably yesterday. I don't know if she's still, she's still thing. She's telling people to go vegan. Beyonce. She's, yeah, well, there. Yeah, exactly. All right, Corey. Sorry, I know I skipped your super chat. I found it, dude. Um, all right, that's all for the super chats for now. You guys can feel free to start another oh, cascade oh, of super a, chats if you want. Beautiful Bucci vegan bag I got with a pretty face on it. You can get that one is, of these. Those are yeah. Good to have. Well, if you really Put want your, to like. If you really want baking soda snacks in there, absolutely. I mean, if you want to carry your uh, hallucinogenic drugs to the EDM festival, you can bring it in that bag. Put the drugs in that bag. It's yeah, it's a vegan bag. It's made from um, kumquats that were not harvested that fell from the tree on their own. <laughs> you watch. Uh, somebody asked about snow. Did you watch Snowden on Rogan? Uh, I've people been asking about it, but no, I haven't seen it. I meant to watch the Dawkins on Rogan, too, so I need to catch up on those. I should just yeah. comment on all these goofy Joe Rogan interviews. I'd grow my channel to 100,000 in no time. No, that, that would be a good idea, man. You make response, like, take some clips, and uh, response, we, could do, exactly. we could even do streams. Like, we could do another stream if you want, where we can take clips from Dawkins, and then we can look at it, and then, like, you know, I can try to pull some good, good critiques out of you. You know, I can pick your brain there. Maybe next week. It's a great idea. Let's do that. Right. Raj, well, cool, dude. Come up twice a day. In okay. Have you got some more clips? Yeah, I got more clips here. And literally be worshipped by his thousands of Western devotees. Not only do these things. Whoa! Look at that dude. <laughs> Not only do it's these. It's a metalhead. That's there. That was Hesher. That was Hesher. Hesher, we <laughs> found you, Hesher. <laughs> Hesher, why are you banging your head at Rajneesh? He doesn't rock. <laughs> Who's that? Trigger emotional oh, this poor little girl, man. Is that Art Ho? <laughs> place people even in the same asylums for the rest of their lives. That but was Liam Gallagher. That these <laughs> exercises can Who's open that? your oh, soul God. and your mind and your entire being to a takeover by demonic forces. <laughs> That's <laughs> Steve Gutenberg there. Those images, man. That that's so. That's just crazy. Look at that. It is a love relationship. She loves. Master and disciple. Something happens in your heart when you see a Lila. master. Bhagwan is my master and I love him. There's Doobie Brothers. <laughs> Bhagwan's my master. There's a Adam Sandler. Part of his required allegiance demanded that his followers. Dude, it's so funny because the youth movements now, they still. Like they they just use the same formula on all these. Like if you look at let's yeah. let's I got Extinction Rebellion pulled up. You want to watch some of those those clips? We've talked too much Osho. Osho's here we go. Osho's a no show. Yeah, Osho's so 1984. 
<laughs> we got Extinction Rebellion. Let's find, let's look up the Extinction Rebellion. Yeah, it's because that's a great point. Like, they're all acting like idiots. They're all mindless. They're all in red. They're all vegetarian. And then fast forward 30 years to the future now, and all these tards are doing the same stuff, acting the same way. And like they've, they, been, they've been downloaded with the same mind control program. They do the same dances, too. Like, look at this guy. This guy would have been at the Rajneesh cult. If he wasn't here, he would be with Bhagwan. Let's see. Sydney, Australia. They chant, how dare you? Wow. What? I can't see what they're doing. What are they? Let me... you, you couldn't see? Oh, shit. Here. Maybe it's kind of small on your screen. It might be blurred. No, it's not doing anything. It's just showing. It's like a frozen Twitter page is all I, all I see. Oh, that's because. Jay Dyer, I thank you so much for bringing it to my attention. There we go. There we all right, go. now let's do it. All right. Sorry, guys. You just had to hear that. Now you're going to. Uh-oh. Where do we go? Extinction Rebellion. So here's the guy that I was oh talking about that nobody could see. That's the Wook. Do you know those are called Wooks? He looks like a like a character. He looks like They're a called Wook. He's like a gay predator. <laughs> <laughs> They're called Wooks because they they look like Wookies. They're festival got people that look like Wookies because of all the hair. Yeah, I got this you. This is something I was I learned. I recently. like it. The, yeah, you, is that what the kids are calling them these days? Yeah, they're called Wooks. <laughs> they're calling them Wooks. The Zoomers are calling them. Can you hear us now? 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 How dare you? How dare you? But these wow. are more like so these are. I do want are, to mention that because I mentioned yeah. this to you before we started that the the symbol that they've got that hourglass symbol is also uh, in Crowleyan Thelemic philosophy. That is the mark of the beast because you can. It's kind of has a geometrical explanation to it, but the X is in, in the Crowleyan philosophy the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Crowley has a whole thing on that, and that's relevant because I think. I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying these people are the end times, but there is this apocalyptic cult element to this group because they are like aoc and these people and beto you know we only have 10 years left before we're all dead mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they do Cults see it as like have the apocalypse stuff yeah yeah exactly they got this this end times thing and what we see now and even osho like the what we started the stream with was the osho clip where he's talking about we need a one child policy is not even enough we need extreme birth control total birth control you know, um, that's all these people have the same like Malthusian, uh, not enough resources ideology. Yeah. How, why do all of these stupid cults and all of these promoted movements that are all counter culture, why do they all have the cult, the establishment's philosophy? Duh. The same shit. Check out this guy. This guy wins. This guy is the winner of Extinction Rebellion right here. Stop denying our planet is dying. Oh, is it? A, I thought it was a video. Is it just an image? That's just a picture, unfortunately. <laughs> look at that I guy. wish we could have. Look at his man bun. It's sick. It took him like five months to grow that man bun. He's so, <laughs> this is like he went, he went out to protest the day that he was able to tie his hair up in his little, his little Smurf man bun. They probably hand out man buns at those protests. There's fake ones that you can like <laughs> clip on. Clip on man buns to be. This is the new version of. Who even thing. wears a fucking man bun anymore? That's so 2010, bro. No, it's making a comeback at Extinction Rebellion. They wear man buns as a sign of, like, we need to all be infertile and sterile. They actually. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, it's the new pussy hat. 
<laughs> is the beaver head. It's the beaver head. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the latest ones because it's every weekend they seem to go out again, and uh, and they do their little street actions. They love images like this. There you go. Positive, peaceful, humanistic stand-up for nuclear events stood in sharp contrast to the violent protests of Extinction Rebellion. Well, that's that's an interesting thing that you're going to see now too. Is these the fake counter movements, right? <laughs> like, look, we've got a solution: carbon taxes. Come on. The ugly truth about fashion. It's interesting that everything is becoming quote ethical, right? Ethical yeah. companies, ethical coffee, ethical cereal, ethical corporations, ethical driving. Eth so they're creating this giant fake moral high ground like you were talking about with that John.